this day that you've allowed us to open our eyes to see. We thank you, God. We don't take this opportunity lightly. Now at this time, open up our hearts, our ears, and our minds to be attentive, receptive, and altogether responsive to your word. That our lives will be changed, hearts will be softened, minds are renewed, wrong living will be made right. All of us will be met with conviction walls. When we leave this place, we have a fresh wind to run on to see what the end will be. Strengthen the person who we are sitting next to right now. They need you. Can I get along with you? So God, have your way in this place at this time. And we say thank you in advance for what you are going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Look at a neighbor and say, it's good to be here. And that neighbor didn't say nothing. Look at another neighbor and say, it's really good to be here. That neighbor didn't say nothing. Turn around look at another neighbor and say, it's really good to be here. really good for us to to be here. Amen. So great for God to see all of your faces here. Amen. Pop members, give yourself a great big hand, will you? Amen. 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 We have begun a sermon series on the Beatitudes. This morning, we want to continue this journey. It's found in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 5. Matthew 5 and 5. Amen. Matthew 5 and 5. If you don't have your Bible, that's why we have screens. Thank God for screens. Amen. You can look up and see the scripture on our, on our message board. Matthew 5 and 5. I won't be before you long. Amen. But we want to make sure that all of us leave here with just a little more to run on to see what the end will be. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verse number 5. We have to say, Amen. amen. Read on this wise. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. Blessed. Y'all see that? Are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. If you don't mind, look at a neighbor. Say, neighbor. Blessed are the meek. You may be seated. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are, are the meek. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the meek. The meek. Jesus, being the great master teacher, was very careful not to begin his lesson or his lessons with uh, negative connotations and or criticisms. These, if there were to be negative connotations or criticisms, they would be toward the Pharisees and the scribes. Yeah, yeah. He did, however, begin with positive brushes, emphasizing righteous character yeah. and the blessings that it brings to all of us who are called as believers of Christ. Yeah. This idea of righteous living, brothers and sisters, simply means that there is a right way and a wrong way to live. Uh, uh, all of us know how it feels to be on either one of the side of the track. 
where you really want to say the right thing, but the wrong thing comes out. Where you really want to do the right thing, but the wrong thing gets done. If all of us are transparent. If you will, this morning we could all testify that we fall, even right now, on one side or either side of that spectrum. It doesn't matter how good you look in church this morning, there's still some wrong in you. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter how many, how many, how many, if you will, uh, supper tables you come to, there's still some wrong in you. Doesn't matter how many scriptures you read, there's still some wrong in you. If I can pull the playbook, if you will, out of the page of one, uh, Dr. C. L. Harvey, who's going on to be with the Lord, he would stand up before the masses and he would say, because there is some wrong in me, and there is some wrong in you. None of us can talk about any of us because all of us have something wrong with us. Come on, talk about to me. You have some wrong. I have some wrong. All of God's children have some wrong. So the best thing for me to do is to look at the mirror and see what it is that God wants me to do. And when he shows me, I turn right and keep going. Do I have about 20 folk in the building who can slip up their hands and testify that God has called you to righteous living? How much church you go to? Be on time? All you want to. There is some righteous living that must go on. Come on, talk back to me if you can. Uh, 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 the Pharisees, if you will, taught that righteousness was external. Look at your name and say external. In other words, in other words, it's contingent on my obedience to rules and regulations. And so, if I see you praying, if I see you giving, and or if I see you fasting, you are on the good road. You on the right track with me. Come on, talk back to me if you can, huh? Uh, 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 you hear me say this all the time, brothers and sisters, as it relates to our giving. You ought never give to be seen, but you ought to be seen giving. What are you talking about, Pastor Dawson? I give up my time, I give up my talent, and I give up my treasure. And I don't care if all you got is a hot five to put in the basket. God will bless you for the hot five. Whatever God give you to give back to him, give him glory. Watch this. Watch this. It's not contingent on externalities. Uh, uh, how much you fast? How well you pray? Huh? <laughs> Mr. Joseph Walker says it's not how long you pray. But rather, it's how strong you pray. Because you can spend 24 hours on your knees talking to God and can't never get a prayer through. Come on, talk back to me if you can't. Huh? But if you pray with some power, you pray with some conviction, you pray with some zeal, you pray like it's already done. And in the middle of your prayer, your prayer turns into worship. Tears start falling from your face. And that's when you can say, God, I want to thank you because I started this prayer asking you for something. But I'm not going to ask you for nothing else. Because you know what I need before I ask about it. And so I just want to say thank you. For everything you've done for me. I got to hit, I got to hit, I got to hit right here. I got to hit, I got to hit. If God don't do anything else for me, Brother Hines, he's already done enough. He fed me yesterday, he can feed me today. Close me yesterday, he got some good place right now. Close me yesterday, he'll close me today. He's been my all and my all. So, and so, so these Pharisees and these scribes, I'm almost out of here, believe it or not. These Pharisees and these scribes said, listen, as long as you praying in the open, as long as you worshiping in the open, huh? As long as, as long as long as long as you're doing what we think you ought to be doing, you're on good ground. 
And I cannot put a pin rock in this way. Everybody's going to get caught. I can help right now. Don't you know we have modern day Pharisees and scribes in the church? You ain't got to say, man, just look at that man and I'll understand. Huh? Huh? Folks are okay with you so long as you're doing what they want you to do. Huh? So long as you pick up, come on, help me in here. Huh? So long as you dance off of their drum beat, huh? they okay with so long as you don't, your house don't get bigger than theirs. Huh? So long as you don't make more money than them. Huh? So long as you don't drive a better car than them. Huh? So long as you don't dress better than them. Huh? They okay with you. Huh? But the moment God gives you an upgrade, huh? The moment God moves you from the outhouse to the in-house, they want to leave. And that's when you want to stand up on your feet, give a good salute, and say, hasta luego, hasta la vista, holla, do me. Because I can't serve God and serve you at the same time. I don't care how much you know. Choose you this day whom you gon' serve. Well, as for me in my house, we, I can't, I, I can't speak for you in your house, but I can speak for mine in this one right here. We gon' serve. So, watch this. Watch this. They say, listen. Listen. The Pharisees and the scribes are concerned about the external. But God, Jesus, says, wait a minute. What I see on the outside should have first began on the inside. What's in you has to come out. You need Bible. Come here, Solomon. It's not what goes in you that what defiles a man, but it's what comes out. Come on, help me in here. That's why if I got a problem with you, I can keep it on the inside and take it to Jesus because I don't want to be guilty of calling somebody else to stumble and fall. So I keep it to myself. Watch this. Watch this. So what's on the inside will eventually come out. Now that's both positive. Huh, Keisha Rhodes? And negative. Come on, help me in here, huh? Huh? If, if you feed your body, feed your brain negative stuff, surround yourself with negative people, folk ain't never got nothing good to say, guess what? Eventually, you're going to take on the same mindset that they, come on, help me in here, huh? And you don't just see it in the church, you see it on the job, see it, come on, help me out, huh? Some of you sleep with folk that don't never pray. But they start more mess up. Outside should first begin inside. Are you in here? Should first begin inside. What's on the inside of me? Huh? In Solomon, John Jesus says, Huh? Uh, uh, Dawson has it for you. It's like a candle searching all of the inward parts. That's why you ought to chime in. So Sam, you and I ought to chime in and hook up and say, listen, God, whatever it is 